Welcome to this week's Culture Report. We have two very special guest co-hosts with us this week, DeMarco and Antonia. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank so you for having us. So open it up, where y'all from? Um, so I'm from Medellin, Colombia. Um, I grew up there, but I'm also an American citizen and I moved to Denver a little over four years ago. Oh, yeah. Man. I'm from Denver, so kind of a local boy. I'm happy to be back home. I went to college <laughs> in Minnesota. So, you know, being here, it's like, you know, dream come true. I love that. I'm a native too, if you didn't know. That's a oh, welcome. We don't meet a lot of no. them. That's exciting. I think the only one that's probably not yeah, from here yeah, is I'm Ashton. Yeah, I'm not from here. Still getting adjusted. <laughs> love that. Uh, but y'all ready for this? Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Okay, let's get started. So the Oscar nominations are out, and it's not as white as years past. So this year, people of color were represented in every acting category. Cole Domingo, who was Coleman Domingo, who was nominated for his role in Rustin, became the first Afro-Latino nominated for Best Actor. Lily Gladstone became the first Native American nominated for Best Actress. And Barbie, a box office success, received eight nominations, but the two women responsible for 2023's biggest movie were not recognized. Were not recognized. So, did the Oscars snub Greta Gerwig and Margot Robbie? Ooh, that's a good question. What do y'all oh. think? I mean, I personally think yes. Eight nominations is a lot, and to not recognize, you know, the lead role and the director, who both happen to be women, right. is kind of telling. Well, and to bring to that point, they're women. One of their same people in that same movie. Right. Ryan. What the movie represented. <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's nominated. But why isn't it that these women that helped make this record-selling film, why, why don't they get that also recognition? Right. Yeah. I actually, I thought it may be contributed to, like, the competition being a little steeper. I think these are award shows that are competitive. So this year we have more people of color in those categories. So could it be that, like, the competition was that stiff? I don't know, but here's here's the part that there's two parts that bug me. The first one is how do you get big pic like best picture? I agree. And not like the best director. I something doesn't make sense. You're the leader in this movie. Right, right. Something just doesn't add up. So I don't know Those if two the, things do kind of go hand in hand. I right? I, I, I would think so. So if it gets I, best picture, the person that created the picture, you would th which is yeah. the director, you would think that they would have for sure like, a nomination. And it's peers that are like selecting it. So I'm guessing like actors pick actors and directors do directors. So I'm not sure what happened, but something just doesn't add up there for me. I kind of agree. I just think the <laughs> competition might have been a little stiff this year. Maybe. Yeah. You yeah. might be right, yeah. yeah. Um, and Ryan Gosling, this was not his best performance. <sighs> I, I don't know if that's... You know, it was not, and he also <laughs> released a statement saying, recognizing the fact that the director and the lead role were not recognized for their role in this in the making of this movie. Um, and he, he released that saying, you know, there's no Ken without Barbie, and there's right. no Barbie without Greta Gerwig. Facts. Exactly. Oh, Very true. That. Okay, Very well, true. we'll come back to that. <laughs> <laughs> Spelman College, the historically black uh, women's liberal arts college in Atlanta, is set to receive a $100 million donation, the largest single donation in HBCU history. So $75 million will go towards scholarships for future students, while $25 million will be used to develop academic studies and improve uh, student housing. This comes as the HBCU celebrates 100 years since its official naming in 1924. An Aurora police officer acquitted in the death of Elijah McClain has resigned. The officer initially expressed his intent to return to the police force, but later resigned after he agreed to settle with the city of Aurora for more than $400,000. This comes after a jury acquitted him of manslaughter back in November. Okay, is, uh, I guess the question that we're going to ask is, is America a racist country? Um, that's the question that's being asked on the campaign trail. So over the past, past few weeks, politicians Ron DeSantis and even Vice President Kamala Harris gave their thoughts on the divisive question. But let's look at what Nikki Haley had to say. But I refuse to believe that the premise of when they formed our country was based on the fact that it was a racist country to start with. I refuse to believe that. I truly believe our founding fathers had the best of intentions when they started, and we fixed it along the way. Laura, I get with this. Uh, is I, it a I racist country? I guess I ask country? you, is, is this a racist, do you believe this is a racist country? I mean, if slavery wasn't obvious, and maybe, you know, 
schools may not be segregated as they were, you know, as obvious before Brown versus Education, Board right. of Education. But they still are. The U.S. still found in 2022 that schools are segregated. And there's efforts to, like, go back on DEI efforts and, in, you know, initiatives and major institutions. I.e. Ron DeSantis. <laughs> <laughs> and, even, like, and even a bank recently, like, was found to deny mortgage loans mm -hmm. to black people. So I'm like, um, it may not be as obvious, but it's still there. All right. What do you think, Duarco? I mean, I think that it, I think it's a loaded question, first of all. Right. I think that for someone to answer this question and to not acknowledge the past of the actual history of the United States is somewhat ignorant. I think that it's also, um, it, it dismisses what happened to a, a huge number of folks. Right. It dismisses um, stuff that has been I didn't like just black folks, like <laughs> black folks, uh, Native American people, you know what I mean? Yeah, There's so many Hispanic people. Hispanic people, you know, right. I mean, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And it's still going on. I think the context is missing a lot of times when this is asked. It's like, is it still a racist country? Yeah. I think we definitely have a racist history. And I think there's still racism that we're fighting. But I think a lot of times the divisiveness comes in. Like, do people believe this is still a racist country? And I'm like, we still are battling police brutality in, Absolutely. in ways for the black community. So I, I think it's still there. I know you're not from... <laughs> like America, but yeah. what are your like thoughts? No, I, I totally agree. I think racism is prevalent in Colombia, where I'm from. It's prevalent here. Um, and I think that last line that Haley said, we worked along the way to fix it, is really the kicker. Because, <laughs> right. I mean, we're seeing in Colorado and in Washington, um, officers who use force to eventually that ends in, in ending the lives of people who, you know, in the end, this family is grieving, this life is lost, and in the end, they end up being rewarded right. um, in a way, or, you know, acquitted. They go, they walk away, they can lead their lives. Um, but this is something that I think that really is, is something that we, we need to talk about. Like, it's not just the history. Mm -hmm. This stuff is still happening. Like, right. there's remnants yeah. um, that we need to acknowledge in order to fix. And That's Nikki, so I think she's one of those people that may be, like, blind to it because they don't experience it. I think that's that's the difference too, in like us, like me being well, Latino. She's, she's a Native American woman. She identifies as being indigenous. Well, she so. hasn't experienced something, Ooh. is what I'm okay. guessing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, it's definitely something that we want to continue to have our eye yeah. on because I think it's such a huge conversation and it impacts like everybody that's on this stage right now. So, yeah. We'll follow it. And we're getting a better idea of racial progress in the U.S. According to Wallet Hub, Georgia and Texas topped the charts for improvements. Despite, despite history of racial discrimination, the report measures education, employment and social, ex, employment and wealth, social and civic engagement, and health between white and black residents. Georgia, which ranked number one, reduced the earnings gap by over 32% since 1979. Texas came in second, the leader for, the re for reducing health insurance coverage gaps between white and black residents. Guys, Colorado ranked number 36 on this list. I actually don't find that surprising. I do, because I I'm a native, you're a native, yeah. and maybe it's just not as obvious to me again, Ashton, but I have a very tight-knitted group of friends, and maybe when I'm so well-established with the community here, maybe I don't feel it when I go places and notice that maybe there's not a lot of diversity, or maybe I just hang out in places that are very diverse and that doesn't let me notice that there's more. But I was really surprised, especially because, like, Polis is, like, you know, the governor, and he's running the state. I just, something just, it really surprised what, me. What about you? Because you're a native. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was just going to, you know, say some, some of the things along the same lines. I mean, being from Colorado, I don't know if it's because, like, when you're up close to the elephant, all you see is gray. Like, I don't know if we need to take a step back and get a better grasp of, really, of the demographics and what is going on, but... I mean, honestly, in my opinion, I don't, I don't see it as there's. I don't. I don't think Colorado is number thirty-six. You think it should be higher? Like I, I like, think it should be lower. Like it should be like up there. I, I didn't think that it like is, up there meaning like it has more racial like that it's more progressive and that mm -hmm. it has been that that gap isn't as big. See, I would disagree <laughs> with it. I, what has been your experience? Or like um, why, why do you say that? Oh my hair. Um, it's it's it's. 
it was jarring moving here. It's still jarring. I feel like I, I'm still having a very, very hard time assimilating, or I don't want to simulate, but just yeah. integrating with yeah. Colorado culture. It's very divisive. Like there is a black side of town, which is referred yeah. to as Aurora. There is like a Hispanic <laughs> population that is predominantly in this one section. Um, and then there's this like these really strong, I, I was going to say a pocket, but there's r strong white areas that just like a white population. So to me, it's yeah. like very segregated. Whereas like when I come from New York, you're amongst everybody. Yeah. Different languages, different cultures, different races, everything. And it doesn't feel like that in our, like in Colorado. So like, when I saw 36, I, it should have been 50. <laughs> not really, but I, I, I think 36 is appropriate. Yeah. Well, and I, and I think that's why it's, like, important to put that into perspective. And, like, what I would said, like, maybe it's because, like, I'm too, too close, like, into it to where I don't really, like, understand, like, what is actually happening or, you know, expose myself to these other environments. But, yeah. um, and the, the southern states were the ones that ranked highest. Why do you think that is? Like, what are these states doing that is helping them be successful in this, Ashton? Well, I think if you're like, it's like a paper. Like, if you get a zero on a paper and then you got to retake the test and then you get a 50, mm -hmm. you had a, a, a huge improvement. Yeah. You still failed, though. Yeah. Yeah. That's what those southern states are. Like, you know, they have a lot more work to do. I, everyone has work to do. <laughs> right. But the southern states in particular have a lot of work to do. So, of course, they're going to have these bigger uh, jumps in, in uh improvement so that's how i see it like new york may only grow like a certain percentage but it's already a very diverse you know place to be yeah whereas georgia texas are not agreed and i'm a texan so <laughs> <laughs> <Kind of. laughs> all right and according to new research from pew about 99 percent of all americans live near at least one mexican restaurant one in ten restaurants in the U.S. serves Mexican food, and 85 percent of all counties have at least one of them. And although Mexican cuisine is widespread, it's most prevalent in California and Texas, which have around 40 percent of all Mexican restaurants in the country. Researchers say the study reflects the growing American population, the growing Mexican-American population, which now accounts for 11 percent of the total U.S. population. And according to the ACLU annual report, 2023 saw a record number of anti-LGBTQ bills being introduced at the state level. Last year, over 500 bills across more than 40 states were proposed. So far this year, the ACLU is tracking 329 bills that seek to impact LGBTQ plus freedoms. And during halftime of an NBA basketball game between the Miami Heat and the Charlotte Hornets, a ceremony honoring Wade's career and his induction into the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame was the topic of discussion for some. However, the focus shifted from his career accolades to his appearance, his nails having paint on them. It's like seeing Jordan in lingerie. There's not much to it. Like, if he paints his nails, he paints his nails. Like, ASAP Rocky's painted his nails, Harry Styles. Everybody has been doing his... The Come Talk To Me podcast wasn't the only one to comment. Some took to X where Cole Beasley posted, quote, what's up with dudes painting their nails nowadays? That ain't it, end quote. And also, former Bronco Chris Harris Jr. reposted, adding, quote, they retired the alpha males, end quote. Kenny Stills, also a former NFL wide receiver, posted, quote, it's color on nails. That's like someone asking what's up with all these dudes getting tattoos. Self-expression, end quote, end quote. So, I mean, that, what that brings to my head, I mean, like, is painting a nail a form of expression, do you think? I think so. Actually, like, well, my nails kind of like a little jacked up right now, but uh, I painted my nails and um, it when I first did it and I first went back home to my family in Texas, they freaked out. Oh, yeah. I still don't have a relation, relationship with some of my family now because of like the way my nails were painted that day. Um, I think it's, um, especially in the black culture, I feel like it's men aren't allowed to express anything that symbolizes any semblance of femininity. Yeah. And I think that's what nail polish, to me, is silly. It's nail polish. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I do think it's a form of expression. Um, and the very basis of, like, toxic masculinity is, like, not being able to, exp right. to express yourself, to show that, you know, form of expression. It's, like, restrictive emotionality is at the very basis of, like, toxic masculinity. And I think that, along with other forms of, like, be it artistic expression or gender expression or sexuality expression, that's like restricted for men, for a lot of men. Right. So much machismo with this, mm -hmm. so much of it. And I see it also, in, you know, in Mexico, so much of it. And again, 
I just see these men, they're going to have kids. Their children are going to watch them, hear them say these things, write these things. I mean, it's spreading this information, this hate. It's right. unnecessary. I, I love Dwayne Wade for everything he's done for his daughter, supporting her, right. the LGBTQ community. But this so is, progressive. yeah, and I hate that they're taking away from what he accomplished and focusing on something so, like, trivial. Like this. And ignorant. Yes, yeah. very ignorant. <laughs> so, so ignorant. Okay, but, you know, we're going to move on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, it's time for the good news, so let's hop into it. <laughs> uh, America is becoming more black, according to the Pew Research Center. Data shows that the black population in the U.S. has grown by 32% since 2000. The number of black people who identify his, as Hispanic also rose almost 200%. And Latinos are also growing massively in the U.S. electorate. Pew Research estimates 36.2 million Latinos are eligible to vote this year. That's a 12% increase from the last presidential elections in 2020. Latinos are projected to make up just under 15% of the country's eligible voters this November. That's nearly double the percentage in the year 2000. If I was going to win or walk away mm -hmm. with my friends and memories and not winning, then I needed to do it on my terms as Madison Marsh with all of the different hats that I get to wear. Along with being crowned Miss America, Madison Marsh is a master student at the Harvard Kennedy Public Schools program and second lieutenant in the U.S. Air Force while also representing as Miss Colorado. The last Miss Colorado to win Miss America was Rebecca King in 1974. 60 years ago, women couldn't even get a credit card or a mortgage without a male cosigner. Now, single women own more homes than single men in almost every state. For example, nearly 12% of homes in Colorado are owned by single women, compared to 10% by single men. Nationwide, single women own 2.71 million more homes than single men. This according to LendingTree. All right, that's, that's, that was some like, record achievement things like I, I love like it. the home ownership is something that I didn't know until today. Yeah, and the kick is a lot of Gen Zers and millennials were the ones that applied for mortgages the most in 2023, which I thought was very interesting in, in Colorado. So interesting. Wow. And then the Pew research results, I, I just like that. seeing like the black population grow, the Latino population grow. Yeah, and especially like Latinos who are eligible to vote because you know, not all people who reside in the United States, unfortunately, are eligible to vote. I also love the food one, too, because I can't believe it. The Mexican food being, like, almost everywhere. 99% of people can have access to a Mexican yeah, restaurant I now. I love that. I grew up in South Americans. Texas, so I love <laughs> Mexican food, so that was... It. And then Miss America? Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, the best thing about her is that those different hats. I think <laughs> a lot of us can relate to that, uh, the different things that we do, so I keep that. on going. Love okay. that. All right. Well, we'll be back to continue the conversation next Thursday right here on our free 9 News Plus app and on 9news.com.